was uh, the district governor for uh, West uh, Indonesia, and he is here attending. So pretty interesting, I hope. And let me go to your first slide. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having us. I'm Reza Bunar, and then my uh, my poster parent from Holland, uh, Chris Subroto. And I'm from Jakarta, from Bekasi, but now I'm in Holland, running away from Indonesia for a couple months. So uh, before I start to share this story about the RB Indonesia, from ways to value, that's what we call. But I will uh, share my story with you. I grew up at this biggest landfill in Southeast Asia, in Bandar Gebang. So I'm well known as a princess of the dump. That's how people call me because I grew up there. So I know how to, to smell the, the rubbish, the waste every day. And also because of this, my job now becoming a waste man management consultant. So that's my job. But also, you know, like human consumption and we as humans, we not just cruel to the environment, but also to the human itself, the human being. And because of the human consumption, I lose my uh, beloved home. We call it our children's center in Bandar Gobang in December after the Christmas. This is the reason why I'm in Holland now in Europe to, to, for my healing. So I don't want to be in Indonesia to see the eviction happening. And this is also because the landfill is full cap capacity and then our government uh, built a new project on our land. So that's including our land in Bandar Gebang. So now we stop our activity. We give education for the children since 18 years ago. So it's more than 18 years since 2004. And then of course I was sad. And then I tried to use this sadness into happiness to make something meaningful out of it. And then, then this RB Indonesia born as an idea. And then I talked to some people from Holland and also including uh, Mr. Chris Subroto is my consultant as well. And then, uh, then we have this idea from ways to value. So next slide. And you see this, uh, this is Banda Gebang. If uh, people Google this name and then this is a famous in, in Indonesia and I think also around the world, the biggest landfill in South Asia, receiving seven tons per day from Jakarta, only from Jakarta, not from across Indonesia, only from Jakarta, including one ton of plastic waste per day. So RB basically is from uh, R, Reza, B, Bunar, so Reza Bunar. So this is one uh, of my dream before I give up with my country, because you know, when I'm, I'm upset, then I was thinking maybe I should leave Indonesia. Whatever I do in this country, like, like uh, nobody care about it. And also I agree with one slide from, uh, from uh, uh, Claudia, like uh, they, they know, but they don't care. Like uh, this is what happened to me, like the, because I'm sad and then, you know, like two years fighting with the government. And then at the end, I know that I have to let go. And then this RB, like I have to do this. At least I can do something. Uh, and also for this uh, children center, I want to stop rely on uh, people donation in the future. I really want to use this RB profit to support my, uh, my activity. Next slide. So uh, this is uh, like this Bandar Gebang is home for uh, two, 3,000 residents, scavenger, and I call them the trash hero. And yeah, as people know, it's dangerous working condition at the landfill. People have to climb that mountain like during the day, during the night. So they work like 24 hour a system, a working system there and school drop out, child marriage, discrimination, crime, so many things. So if people are wondering so how you can come out of this misery, Risa, because uh, I got support from my foster parent in the UK they send me to university. That's how I can get my education and also my foster parent in Holland support me as well, how to be a decent human. Next slide, please. 
Yeah, maybe important, Teresa, to say that the 3,000 resident scavenger yeah. families are over far over to 10,000 people, eh? including the wives and the children. Yeah. yeah. So, so 3,000 residents. So, like with the wife, 6,000, including children, over 10,000 or 15,000. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, people know like environmental issues like uh, CO2, methane emission, water pollution, air pollution, and uh, like you, you, you cannot imagine like for uh, people who can buy the water gallon in Indonesia, easy for them to drink the water, but if they couldn't afford to afford to buy that one and then they will uh, drink the water from the, the ground. So uh, we did uh, uh, what you call it the research about the water, and then uh, we found like there is a lot of uh, dangerous uh, stuff in the water, and yeah. But again, like there is no choice for people. We install like our water filter at the BGPG at our children center. We got the 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 technology from Singapore. But then I, I was uh, the one who drink the water for the ceremony. And then I smell something, but you know, like this is ceremony. We have to look good on camera because there is a journalist and stuff. But the next day after five days, the kids like, they complaining like, sis, the water smell. And then I said like, we have to stop drink this water because we, we use water filter. And then, uh, then there is no way like to, to, to drink the water from uh, the landfill. Then for, for people, they can afford to buy, uh, let mention like the most expensive one in Indonesia, aqua. But not all the people can afford that. And then they buy the cheap uh, quality of the water. And if, if we test and then there is like zooplankton or something like dangerous for our, uh, no, this is what we call it. Uh, the coli, e. coli, e. yeah, e. coli, and then we found that in in the water. So yeah, really, really dangerous for uh, people who live there. Next slide, please. And now, yeah, with uh, I, I mentioned earlier because I'm too excited, and then uh, I said uh, already like this, B, uh, the BGBG, we will fund it from the RB net profits when we set our company and also including the informal education for the children of the landfill. And we also creating employment opportunity for the young adults. So this is uh, what uh, we're gonna do with the, the RB. Next slide, please. Uh, and also this RB will addressing the environmental issue through waste collection and upcycling. So now people only like, most of people, they, they, they want to do like recycling, but we want to scale up a bit. We want to do upcycling. So we make uh, the product out of plastic, out of the textile waste, and also a can and anything we, we sort in our collection uh, uh, and sorting plan. And also it will avoid in a plastic leakage uh, of 180,000 uh, a kilo per year and also uh, avoiding 2,000 tons of CO2 emission per year. And also we, we will do the environmental education. We did already in our uh, school, but we will continue with the, the, the better method. But uh, in our school, we also stop uh, using the styrofoam and uh, paper box, I think since 2016 in our place, but the kids, I remember, you know, the kids from three years old until 18 years old, they complain, the complaining, they said to me, Sister Risa, why uh, we have to do this? Uh, people in Jakarta, they keep sending the rubbish to our home bandar gebang, but why we have to do this? And I said like, look kids, the mountain of rubbish is getting higher in just in front of our home. And maybe sooner or later, and maybe in a couple of years, they're going to eat our home alive. So I'm talking about the efficient. And then December 2022, it's happening. Then, you know, like November 27, before I left to Europe, I said to the kids, this is my farewell with you. But I promise I will rebuild the BGBG again. 
So then, uh, yeah, it really sad. And I just remind them like about what I said, this landfill, we creating monster as human. And then uh, one day they're gonna eat us. They're gonna eat our place. And then this is happening. So uh, for me, like uh, with this RB Indonesia, what we're gonna do is, uh, yeah, we want to, do, to make a small furniture or household item for the first year. And the second year when we have, uh, yeah, we got funding or angel investor, investor, uh, we will uh, scale up to make uh, like a more uh, decent uh, product, doors and frames as well, window, and also home construction construction panels. That's what we're gonna do. But uh, when I got back to, I will uh, go home in February to Indonesia. Then uh, we will start with the textile waste first, and then we want to make uh, something simple like uh, you know in Indonesia when the kids doing homework, like we're gonna make like the tables, like small table out of plastic. We also we gonna uh, use our uh, professional designer how to make it look uh, pretty, and also we make, we will make stool and uh, also coaster. And yeah, we will start from something small first uh, at the beginning. But if we can find the right investor or angel investor this year, we, we will do the, the decent one, the, the good one. The annual budget we need uh, for the first year is around 130,000 euros. But the second uh, year, we will need around 70,000. So this is our budget uh, for now. But uh, I have a mission, two mission in this year. First, to get a new land for the BGBG for the China Center. And second, to reborn this RB Indonesia in Indonesia this year. So uh, this is our uh, story, like just small story. If, I, if you let me to talk, I wouldn't stop until tomorrow morning. So this is uh, about you, Indonesia, or maybe yeah. uh, Mr. Chris, brother, you want to say something? I just want to say next slide, please. <laughs> please okay, yeah. please join us to improve the lives of the children and fight plastic pollution. Yeah, I think it's important to say, uh, Reza and Chris, that there is a social uh, business plan available, uh, pretty detailed and pretty extensive, so that when people are interested, they can read what is the, the whole project about. And also the business case is pretty extensive. It includes, for example, six months of salary for six scavenger families uh, to learn how to do the uh, plastic recycling to avoid dangerous situations. And also it includes all the training and all the, the, the not just the machines, but also the, uh, the, the factory, you could say, to make it all happen. And this includes molds to uh, make the products. So it's a pretty extensive uh, plan and also pretty extensive uh, business case for people to look at. And uh, we will see together with Rionardi. I'm not sure if you're still in the call, sir, but maybe you can say something about uh, what you think of this plan? I'm not sure if that's possible. Maybe we have to. Uh... Okay. Ah. Thank you. Hello. Thank Rina. you very much, uh, Garjan. Uh, I'm very inspiring by these two speakers, Claudia and Reza. Actually, I stay not far from Bantar Gebang, Jakarta. So I know that the situation. Uh, I think uh, the government of Indonesia also work for uh, actually from Jakarta work for uh, to reduce the waste. Yeah. So I think we need uh, more person so we together we can do more. Uh, need more person to do that. So we'll come back Reza to Jakarta and then we'll contact you. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Yeah, yeah, really, really amazing that you are here. And uh, let's continue to uh, do the good things and to be uh, respectful of the time that's needed, but also uh, step by step, we make change happening. 